this lesson, we'll focus on creating the influence line for truss S. Now in this problem, we have a bridge truss and then its live load consists of a uniformly distributed load of uh, 30 kN per meter and also a concentrated load of 90 kN. Now using the influence line diagram, what is the force of member CH due to the uniform load only? Now perhaps what this means is what is the maximum force of member CH due to the uniform load? And then for number 5, we have uh, what is the maximum force of member CH due to the concentrated load only? And then for number 6, we have the maximum force of member CH which will now include the uniform load and the concentrated load. Now recall that in drawing the influence line diagram we need to place a unit load at important points along the beam. However in trusses we'll actually consider the joints and then usually what we'll consider are the bottom joints. So for this one we have A, B, C, D, E, and F. So these are what we'll consider and then we'll place a unit load at these joints and then we'll calculate the force in member CH. And so let's project a line uh, from these joints. We have, this is for A, B, C, D, E, and F. Now what you can do is, you can actually place the unit load at an arbitrary point, and then you may label this distance as, let's say, X, while this is the whole span minus X. However, again, just to make our solution more intuitive, I will just actually move the unit load at these joints, and then we'll solve the reactions individually, as well as the force in CH. So let's just erase this one. And then to simplify our calculations, let's just use our app. Now we have 5 panels at 4.5 meters each. So this is 4.5 as well as the others. And so this total length will be uh, 4.5 times 5. That will give us 22.5. And so first, we'll place our unit load here. So this has a value of 1. And then naturally, the reaction here will be also 1, while the reaction at the roller support will be 0. Now this is when the unit load is at joint A. And so now, to get CH, by method of sections, we can make this cut. And so considering the left side, this is the internal force in CH, this is for HI, and this is for BC. And so to solve CH, since that's the only member with a vertical component because HI and BC are horizontal, then you can just actually sum up forces vertical. And so summing up forces vertical, we have, uh, again, for this placement of the unit load, we have plus 1 and then minus 1. Now again, we are considering the left side of the cut. And then we have minus CH times its vertical component. Now in here, let's just use the angles. And so if we project a line here, this will be... Uh, the height will be 3.6, while half of 4.5 will be 2.25. So this is 2.25. Uh, let's just write it here. This is 2.25. And so our angle theta will be the arc tangent of opposite over adjacent. So we have 3.6, which is the opposite side, divided by the adjacent side, which is 2.25. So this is over 2.25. And so theta will be 57.99. Or let's just say... That's 58. So we have 58 degrees. So this is uh, CH sine 58 for the vertical component of CH. And then this is equal to 0. Now notice that this will cancel. And so this will be 0. And so effectively, the force of CH will also be 0. And so this is the force in member CH when the unit load is at A. Which means that this will be the ordinate of our influence line. Now let's actually first establish our zero line, let's say that's here, and then when the unit load is at A, the force in CH is equal to zero, and so this will be our first point. Now for the next ones, to solve the reactions, I will just actually use my app. And so let's say we have moved our unit load here at joint B, and so this will be our figure. However, the reaction at A and also at F will now change. And so now we have, let's define our span, we have a span of 22.5 now again, this is 22.5 and then meters. So let's define it here. We have a beam length of 22.5. And so since our truss is simply supported, then we'll also add simple supports at each end. So we have this and also this. Ah, uh, by the way, this is, this is actually the hinge and this is the roller. Now earlier, the placement of the unit load is at the hinge support. And then the reaction at A was 1 while at F it was 0 which are actually these values, 1 and 0. And so if we move the unit load to 4.5 meters, since this is now at joint B, our reactions will be 0 0.802 and 0 0.198. So we have 0 0.802 and here we have 0 0.198. And then you can actually consider any of the sides. You can consider the right side of the cut or also the left side. It just depends on you. Now just to reinforce what we are doing here, 
Let's just actually solve the reaction at A and at F. Now to solve the reaction at A, I can take moments about F. So taking moments about F, when the unit load is at B, we have AY times 22.5 and then minus 1 because this will cause a counterclockwise rotation about F. And then the moment arm will be 4 times 4.5. So 4 times 4.5 and then this is equal to 0 and so solving AY we have X times 22.5 minus 1 times 4 times 4.5 that's equal to 0 so we have 0 0.8 which is approximately this value. Now by the way I actually moved it to 4.45 but it's actually 4.5 and so we have this exact value so 0 0.8 and 0 0.2 and so let me just change this. This is 0 0.8 while this is 0 0.2. And so next, we will solve the force in member CH. So we have, let's just erase this. Uh, this is considering the left side, we have plus 0 0.8 and then minus 1. And then we have minus CH sine 58. And then this is equal to 0. And so solving CH, we have 0 0.8 minus 1 minus CH sine 58 we have a value of minus 0.235 or let's say 236 so we have minus 0. Point, uh, let's just say 236 and so this is now our ordinate and so from 0 we'll move to minus 0.236 and so that will be somewhere here this is minus 0.236 and then we'll now move the unit load here at joint c and so placing the unit load here we have that will be 9 meters from the left end so this is 9 our reaction will be 0.6 and 0.4 and so this is now 0.6 while this is 0.4 and so solving CH we have this will now be 0.6 and then since the unit load is not included in the left part of the section then we will not include this anymore so this is now 0.6 which is this one and then minus CH sine 58 and so our CH will be 0.6 minus CH sine 58 this will give us 0.707 or let's just say 0.708 and then positive and so that will be somewhere here this is 0 0.707 uh 8 and so these are our ordinates now moving the unit load at d uh, let's just actually just modify our reaction at a because that's the only value that we need in our equilibrium equation so let's just remove this and then if the unit load is at 13.5 uh, meters from the left end then the reaction at A will be, let's move this, this will be now 13.5. So the reaction here will be 0.4. So this is 0.4 and then changing this to 0.4, we can now solve CH. Uh, just to reiterate, we are considering the left side of this section cut, which is why we have this equilibrium. And so 0.4 minus CH sine 58, that's equal to 0. So this will give us 0.472. So this is now 0.472 and then when the unit load is at E, the reaction will now be 0.2 if we'll just look at our pattern. However, if you want to see it here, this will now be 18 meters. So the reaction will be 0.2 and so if this is 0.2, this will also be 0.2 and then our CH will be, let's just change this, it will now be 0.2. 236 so 0 0.236 and so that will be here now finally when the unit load is at F since the unit load is over the support at F then the reaction here will be 1 and then if this is 1 here then this will be 0 and then if this is 0 then that means that our CH will also be 0 because if we'll change it to 0 we won't have any internal force at CH so this is 0 and so this is now our final ordinate and so let's connect a line from 0 to minus 0.236 and then let's go to 0 0.708 and then 0 0.472 and then uh, by the way this was 0 0.236 and then we finally have 0 now let's just move this now again this is a perfect triangle and so these are our ordinates now by the way for the sign conventions ordinates below the zero line will be compression while above the zero line that will be tension so this is compression right here while in this region we have tension and so again this is now the influence line for the internal force of ch and so for the first question we are asked what is the force of member ch 
due to the uniform load. Now let's just assume that this asks for the maximum force in CH and so that will essentially mean that we'll apply the uniformly distributed load along this span. Now this is because our negative ordinates just cover a small distance. And also one thing to note is the ordinate here is larger than this ordinate. And so due to the uniform load, we will actually place our distributed load on this region. Or if you look at the truss, it will be right here up to here. Now just to make this clear, let's just move this and then we'll put it here. So this is now our uniformly distributed load. And then the magnitude is 30 kN per m. So this is 30 kN per m. And then recall that if you want to find the force, when we are given a distributed load and then we are using the influence line diagram, then we'll multiply this value by this area which will define the ordinates from this point up to this point. And so we have 30 kN per m and then the area of this triangle will be 1 half times the base which is, uh, let's first solve for this distance. So let's say this is x and then this is 4.5 minus x. So we can use ratio and proportion. For this purple triangle, we have 0.236 for the height is to 4.5 minus x. And then for this triangle, we have 0.708 as the height. And then our base is x. And so we cannot solve x. We have 0.236 over 4.5 minus x. And then this is equal to 0.708 divided by x. We have x equal to 3.375. So this is 3.375. And so the base of this whole triangle will be, uh, again, this is 4.5, 4.5, and 4.5. So we have 4.5 times 3 for this distance, and then plus 3.375. So plus 3.375. This is now our base. So again, this is the base. And then our height will be 0.708. So 0.708, this is the height. So we have 30 times 0.5 times 4.5 times 3 plus 3.375. And then multiplied by 0.708, our force will be 179.21. So this is 179.21. And then our unit will be kilonewtons. And so this is our answer, which is approximately this value. Now perhaps this was obtained due to the rounding off of values. Now let's say this is 0.71 and then this is 3.38. We can actually get this value. Uh, again, to get this value, instead of 3.375, what was used is 3.8, uh, I mean 3.38. And then instead of 0.708, what was used is 0.71. And so we have this. So this is 179.77. So perhaps the question here is actually the maximum tension force in CH. Now let's say you are asked the maximum compressive force. Now if that's the question, then the uniformly distributed load will be placed right here uh, on this purple region. Uh, let's just change this. Let's just make this orange just to make this clear. Now for the second question, we have to find the force of member CH due to the concentrated load only. And then let's just also assume that this is the maximum tension force. And so to get this value, we'll use the highest ordinate, which is 0 0.708. And so we'll place the unit load along this point. So this is 90 kN. Now again, this is our given. So this was due to the uniformly distributed load. And then here we have due to the concentrated load, that will be 90 times 0 0.708. So this will give us 90 times 0 0.708. This is... 63.72 so 63.72 kn however perhaps the difference here is that what was used is 0.71 so if we we'll use 0.71 we have 63.9 which is letter b and so this is our answer uh, again this is just using three decimals but essentially the answers are just the same they just differed in the result because of the rounding off of values so this is now 63.9. And then for number 6, what is the maximum force of member CH? Now what this means is uh, since this is due to the concentrated load, for the maximum force, we'll actually consider the two. And so since we have their individual values, this is for the uniform load, while this is for the concentrated load, so we can actually get this value right away. Now we know that for number 4, our answer was 179.77 for this one. And then plus... 63.9 for the concentrated load, we can now get the maximum force, which is 243.67. And so this is our answer. Now in our next video, I will actually teach you the shortcuts that you can apply in order to draw the influence line diagram just in seconds. And so thank you again for listening, and then we'll see each other next time.